Fantastic, the weekly web show for the avid comic book reader and those who aspire to become so. First off, I'd like to thank everyone who stopped by the Boom Booth to say hi this weekend at the Calgary Expo. It was so nice to meet all of you, and thanks to you, the Superbia Volume 1 trade was the first to sell out at the booth. Now recently, someone in the comments section on a recent episode said that I hadn't actually reviewed any comics in a while, so today is the return of Opinionation. Plus, as always, my recommendations of what comics to pick up or download this week. Let's get started. Recently, Carrie Kelly debuted in the New 52, but her appearance in any current continuity bummed me out a little bit. First and foremost, it just reminded me that all the classic DC stories, such as The Dark Knight Returns, where Carrie Kelly is a future Robin, are no longer canon thanks to the New 52. That's ridiculous! To cast aside not just classic stories, but stories better than anything DC is putting out via the New 52, with the exception of Scott Snyder's work? I mean, come on! Also, with her red hair and glasses, Carrie Kelly here reminded me how much I miss Oracle in the New 52. It made me slightly worried that Carrie Kelly might be the new Oracle. Or will that be Harper Rowe? Either way, it wasn't so much Barbara Gordon's tech capabilities that made her a cool character, but that she found a way to continue her fight on crime, despite being paralyzed by the Joker in The Killing Joke. Another story, by the way, that I guess is no longer canon? We need some kind of chart. Plus, if anyone was going to be a secret friend and possible mentor to Damian Wayne, uh, shouldn't it be Cassandra Cain? She was also raised by an assassin, yet her calm demeanor would be a nice contrast to Damien, and perhaps even an inspiration. Finally, perhaps the worst thing of all about Carrie Kelly's debut was that it was just another tease. We learned very little about her, and apparently won't for a while. Who knew comics could be so hip? Saga, Hawkeye, and now Boom's polarity all have a hipster vibe that makes them refreshingly unique. Fiona Staples draws such cool clothing that they can make a saga fashion line, while the romantic subplot in Hawkeye between Clint and Kate seems straight out of New Girl. As for polarity, well, I wouldn't be surprised to see one of the characters on HBO's Girls reading it. As I mentioned last week, Brian Azzarello's Wonder Woman is getting better and better, even if it continues to read like a Greek mythology version of fables. And while they're undoubtedly off to a rocky start, I much prefer the Amazonian princess paired up with Orion than the seemingly incestuous relationship she currently has with Superman. Superior Spider-Man continues to be a superior read, with the last second reveal in the latest issue a genuine surprise. Otto Octavius has never been this compelling, and kudos to Dan Slott for making him a viable leading man. Obviously, Otto can't stay in Peter Parker's body forever, but this incredible run emphasizes how badly Spider-Man needs more villains in his own age range. And on that note, where is Anna Kravenoff? I was skeptical at first, but I think Talon is doing more to build up the Court of Owls mythos than the whole Night of Owls event. Of course, it never hurts to have Guillaume March drawing your book, and some of his recent art cleverly emphasizes that old saying that we tend to look like our pets. As for Snyder, he is slowly but surely making Calvin Rose a distinct crime fighter, a tall order considering Gotham City probably has the biggest vigilante to civilian ratio in the entire DC Universe. My only question is, when is this Haley Circus escape artist going to team up with Dick Grayson? The ladies man could use some more male friends. I have no idea what is happening in East of West. Damn you, Hickman, but it sure is pretty to look at. Speaking of things that are pretty to look at, Jupiter's Legacy is definitely one of them. However, Mark Millar and Frank Quitely are going to have to work harder to make this series more distinguishable from Watchmen, Kingdom Come, Irredeemable, and the like. I think they might be able to do it, so I'll certainly be sticking around for a few more issues. I sincerely hope that the Guardians of the Galaxy movie is better than the Guardians of the Galaxy comic. But with B-movie level casting like Chris Pratt, Dave Bautista, Michael Roker, Zoe Saldana, sorry, I'm basing this off of the losers in Columbiana, plus C-level director James Gunn, I'm starting to worry. Plus, what's with Rocket Raccoon's new catchphrase, blam, I murdered you? Considering the horrible problems we're having in this country with guns, I find it hard to believe Marvel Editorial approved that. But while Brian Michael Bendis might be asleep at the wheel with Guardians of the Galaxy, he's firing on all cylinders with all new X-Men and Uncanny X-Men. Plus, it's a brilliant choice to see Fraser Irving doing the art on Uncanny. His Ilyana Rasputin is particularly awesome, both versions. If only someone could set her up with the star of one of Irving's previous stellar gigs, Clarion the Witch Boy. So, what new titles should you consider picking up this week? First up, there's The Movement from DC Comics, which will be joined by the Green Team later this month. In this title, the 99% get their own superhero team. Let's hope they're better motivated and behave than the Occupy Wall Street protesters. Let's also hope that Gail Simone will finally return to her pre-New 52 form with this title, because so far she's writing like a professor who has tenure. And from Vertigo, Ferris starts another story arc, this time set in the fairy tale version of India. 
While this title has been hit or miss, I do appreciate its global outlook. Then over at Marvel, is Superior Spider-Man over already? The solicitation promises this comic will annoy you more than Spider-Man 700, but I'm not sure how that's a selling point. Meanwhile, Image scores yet again with another killer creative team, this time J. Michael Straczynski and Ben Templesmith's 10 grand. Here a hitman is trying to get out of the business, only to find that his last gig gets him mixed up with demons and angels. Finally, Boom is picking up steam as a publisher as they have not one, but two interesting titles out this week. There's the second issue of Polarity, which you might as well pick up with the first, as well as Mike Carey's Suicide Risk. In this new title, supervillains outnumber superheroes, so a regular policeman decides to try and even the odds by taking a huge risk. Carey is the latest big-name writer to head over to Boom, while Paul Jenkins announced at Calgary Expo that he is exclusively writing for the publisher. And that's this week's Factastic. I'm Grace Randall for Think About the Ink, and hope to see you back on Friday when I'm going to try very, very hard to get you a Between the Pages. Until then, happy reading.